Look, folks, what's going to happen over the next couple of days is they're going to be they're going to be out there fact checking all the things he said. I can't think of one thing he said that was true. Oh, I'm not being facetious. But look, we're going to beat this guy. We need to beat this guy. And I need you in order to beat him. You're the people I'm running for. You are the reason why America is as good as we are. We're the finest nation in the whole damn world. And no one's close. Nobody's close. But let's keep going. See you at the next one. Mr. President, how did you perform tonight? I think we did well. Do you have any concerns about your performance? No, I th it's hard to, hard to debate a liar. New York Times pointed out he made the lie 26 times. Big lie. Welcome to the fourth hour of Morning Joe. That was President Biden first speaking to reporters after the debate and then with that answer to reporters about his performance. It was quite a night, I will tell you. Uh, NBC News senior Washington correspondent Hallie Jackson takes us inside last night's debate room. On stage in the presidential debate, missteps from the current president and misleading attacks from the previous one. From President Biden, who's battling voter concerns about his age, a shaky start. With a raspy voice, he seemed to lose his train of thought when asked about the national debt. Making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Later, mixing up former President Trump's name in a comment about Russia before correcting himself. If you take a look at what Trump did in Ukraine, he's, this guy told Ukraine, he told Trump, do whatever you want and do whatever you want. And that's exactly what Trump did to Putin, encourage him, do whatever you want. At the end of the debate, First Lady Jill Biden escorting him off stage. Two sources telling NBC News President Biden had a cold. Former President Trump pouncing on his rival's slip-ups. I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. From Mr. Trump, a series of dodges and lies about the 2020 election, refusing to deliver a clear answer when asked whether he'd accept the results this November. If it's a fair and legal and good election, absolutely. I doubt whether you'll accept it because you're such a whiner. Halfway through the debate, President Biden bringing up Mr. Trump's conviction. The only person on this stage is a convicted felon is the man I'm looking at right now. And getting very personal. How many billions of dollars do you owe in civil penalties for, for molesting a woman in public, for doing a whole range of things, of having sex with a porn star, on the night while your wife was pregnant. I mean, what, what, what are you talking about? You, you have the morals of an alley cat. Give me a minute, sir. I didn't have sex with a porn star. The president also slamming Mr. Trump for reportedly calling veterans suckers and losers, referencing his own late son who served in Iraq, with Mr. Trump denying he ever said it. My son was not a loser, was not a sucker. You're the sucker. You're the loser. Regarding January 6th, Mr. Trump downplaying what happened during the attack on the Capitol. On January 6th, we were respected all over the world. All over the world, we were respected. And then he comes in, and we're now laughed at. We're like a bunch of stupid people. Both candidates trying to make their cases on issues key to voters, from the economy... He decimated the economy. ...to abortion access. The Supreme Court just approved the abortion pill, and I agree with their decision to have done that, and I will not block it. President Biden pivoting to immigration in his answer on abortion, one of his strongest issues, according to polls. The idea that states are able to do this is a little like saying we're going to turn civil rights back to the states. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered, and he, he went to the funeral. Uh, the idea that she was murdered by, a, by, a, by an immigrant coming in. They talk about that. Afterwards, Trump surrogates flooding the spin room to tout what they saw as a decisive win. I thought President Trump uh, was calm, strong, uh, thoughtful tonight. Vice President Kamala Harris hitting the airwaves to defend the president. There was a slow start, but it was a strong finish. But multiple Democratic lawmakers telling NBC News they're concerned about the president's performance, with some wondering anonymously whether he should remain on the ticket. To the Dem panic that's bubbling up tonight, you uh, say? Do more. Worry less. 
Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more, September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.